Last time on DBZ Kingmaker. After dealing with the Frost Giant, our mercenaries tended to the others who survived the giant's surprise attack. With the others battered and without their armor, they gave what aid they could before heading to a safe area. Our mercenaries moved into the Great Hall where they found some guards and Lieutenant Ivenzi. Once everyone shared what they knew, Ivenzi requested that the mercs find Lady Aldori and confirm her safety by going through a fiery, smoked hallway. On the other side of the hallway, Tartusio was found face down in an art room. While the rest of the mercs surveyed the room, Matherson discovered a room containing a band of cutthroats led by Nishkiv the Knife. In the desperate struggle, Nishkiv managed to slice a bound Jalal's throat before the mercs could save her. Unable to do more than lay her with dignity on a nearby pool table, the mercenaries continued on to search for Lady Aldori. In the dueling chamber further on, they found Lady Aldori surrounded by giants and about to be joined by more bandits. While the other bandit leader, Volodmira, was formidable, Lindsay was able to pull through and save her heroes from a grim fate. Now that Queen Aldori is safe, the mercenaries look to the future to start their fortuitous job without further issues. We return to our mercenaries now. How's everyone doing? Doing yeah, pretty good. Tired. <laughs> Par uh, I, I was told you overdid it today. Yeah, like I said, I thought four glasses of water was apparently supposed to be hydrating you. I was wrong. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing today? Uh, like, okay. are you, you're lifting weights. Day two of the one you, yeah, day two of what you sent me. Okay. And it just, <clears throat> after a certain point, I just stopped sweating. I mean, it's Texas, so it's hot as shit here, but, you know. Are we going to learn who these chads are, by the way? These chads. So, apparently, they were there the whole time, but the book, it's been here. the book didn't mention who they were until the end of the chapter. And I'm... Who are these strapping fellows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking screen. about. They've been here the whole time. Why, why are you pointing out to them now? Come on, now. Bondage wizards or something. Or... They're not... <laughs> That's that's an entire another supplement. The book the book basically describes them as like high school jocks, and I'm like, listen, I I need this specific imagery for these guys because <laughs> they look awesome. It's high school jock. I think they're high. Those are high school bodies in like an anime or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like JoJo. <laughs> yeah, like that's, that's that's a JoJo's body or something. That's a JoJo body. Their adventuring party is called the Iron Wraiths, which, which is a hardcore as f name, and I love it. It's so stupid and edgy. <laughs> Sounds like they'd be yeah from high school or something. And give me a, with the Iron Wraith, bro. Give me a society or lore check, and I'll just go ahead and tell the information because they're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these guys are the Iron Wraiths. They are... Yeah, I know even more. <laughs> According to the lore here, the Iron Wraiths are a relatively experienced band of four adventurers who all wear heavy armor that includes full helmets. They never remove these helmets during any social event. <laughs> the Mandalorians? <laughs> <laughs> and they absolutely walk around like in unison in an attempt to be intimidating <laughs> like apparently they are absolutely badass like fighting them is a, like as a mistake they're all like level six and they're all levels and fighter and shit they're just they're just really good other than the undead lady who else did they lose in the fire and flame just jay fire and flames 
That's our group name, by the way, Fire and Flames. Fire and Flames. <laughs> I think, yeah, let's take a second to actually discuss it, because <laughs> I think the name Sinfire Company is pretty cool, but I wanted to get everyone's opinion. Flame Fire Company. <laughs> it's really, okay, really we're cool. ignoring Okay, we're ignoring Diego's opinion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're still doing that? <laughs> <laughs> we never stopped. <laughs> just, just reiterating, let's all. Just reiterating. Yeah. The ground rules, we gotta reinforce them. <laughs> How about the uh, team Diego and others? Let's workshop that. Because <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm just even thinking, like, you know, how to introduction you. Mathis is the Sinfire 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 Company. They were just staring at us, like, what are they doing? We're thinking of our name. <laughs> <laughs> we a cool name. We need a cool name. It's like, we need a cool name for the paperwork. <laughs> I uh, like the idea that we, we we heard these guys like awesome name and like oh crap we need a name we need a better we need a name, name. <laughs> we need a better name. <laughs> it's like Diego you didn't put the, print the business cards yet and he pulls out like Diego and friends. <laughs> All right, we're not going with those. <laughs> <laughs> There's little teardrop tattoos on the on the side there. <laughs> <laughs> you stole the brand of the. <laughs> the teardrop bandits or whatever they're called. <laughs> Alright, so we have the one you were, you were working with, with was Ashen Company and we have Sinfire. I'm fine mm. with either of those, honestly, because I feel like they both fit everything the party has going on, we'll, we'll, we'll say. I do like, mm. I like Ashen being in there, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's one of my just fun ones yep. for that kind of thing. Mm. Like I said, it comes down to just, you know, when you want to sound it out to see how it sounds, say it as though you're introducing yourself. See how it rolls off the tongue from there. All right, to people who do not know, we are playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, and this is a very, very famous and interesting adventure path where, as it sounds, our characters become heroes and kings. And they had just finished the tutorial, like the fourth one that we've had. <laughs> You have all been gathered back into the Great Hall, and, quote here, It is shocking how quickly Lady Jamandi's staff have restored the manor's Great Hall in the space of a few morning hours. Few signs of violence remain from the night before, as things have been mostly returned to normal. As the adventurers who survived the assault take their seats at the table, other adventurers who arrived just today settle in as well. Ah, okay, that's why we didn't see the Chad Knights down here. <laughs> they just arrived. Okay. Woo! Okay, they just arrived. We didn't break any lore, thank God. Ah, <laughs> uh, if we'd been here, none of this would have happened. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see a new group of individuals that Diego and Matheson both recognize <clears throat> as the Iron Wraiths. That's right. Ha -ha. And as we mentioned <laughs> earlier, the Iron Wraiths are a very strong group of adventurers that all wear matching uniforms. And as you can see, they are quite, quite awesome. Even with these newcomers, though, there are far fewer heroes in the hall than there were on the previous evening, and the atmosphere is serious and somber as Queen Jamandi steps up to speak. She speaks out very somber. I would like to thank those who helped us defeat the Black Tears last night, she begins. It's obvious that someone didn't like our plans to settle in the Stolen Lands, and, well, we're not so easily dissuaded, are we? I say no. And this morning, I would like to issue formal charters to all of you to begin exploring the Stolen Lands and make them safe for tomorrow's settlers. The first charter we would like to bequeath goes to the group called the Iron Wraiths as the four chads stand up and go, Woo! Let's go! Iron Wraiths, what is your profession? <laughs> 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 they just kind of like slam their chest and you can hear like steel hitting steel <laughs> like... <laughs> see i brought see old friend i brought more adventures than you did with the wave towards the band of four well-armed warriors the tales of your adventures have thrilled many brevic nobles and i'm excited to see what you could do with the exploration of the okay god that's a pathfinder name Oh, no. Toss it here. The Glenabon. The, gl the Glenabon. Glenabon? The Glen? The Glenabon Uplands. 
<laughs> but I'd never heard of them before. <laughs> Your charter is to establish a base for Brevoy, and there, after dealing with the Tiger Lords, is then to open diplomatic relations with Patax from a point of strength. They all stand up and just kind of do that, like, you know that, like, a certain dominance walk where your arms are way behind, like, your shoulders are way behind your arms? <laughs> like, bomp, 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 Just like four Gastons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing Tom in from Tom and Jerry, that stupid yes. walk he does. <laughs> when he's leading, like, all the others in yes. into the room. <laughs> they walk up, present arms, and are handed their missive. As they begin to march out, they look at everybody else and like, ha, look at these wimpy adventurers. I bet they need their teddy bears. <laughs> I bet they kiss girls. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> they all high-five and, like, slap each other on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, Diego has no ownership of a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, get bet, loser. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> Let's go kiss a girl, loser. <laughs> That's basically their whole personality. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the Iron Wraiths, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And then to Baron Hennis, oh God, Drelev, Drelev, this guy. <laughs> oh, the, this the main guy. guy. Like the guy with the main character energy. Exactly. As of our previous discussions, your charter is one of specific importance to Brevoy, securing the southern trade routes along the East Selin River and establishing a base for the merchant caravans and barges alike. And this is of utmost importance. He goes up gives a polite bow to Lady Aldori, but as he leaves, he gives like a smirk in your general direction. His uh, mercenary company follows him out of the Great Hall. I don't see any mercenaries. He didn't have the Chad. Your perception's not high enough. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have the Chad Iron Wraiths, okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> Megar Varon, your father and Droth has been a faithful friend. Your charter assigns you to the Noman Heights and to establish a town within the Varling Host. In time, we hope to establish an Aldori dueling score school there. But in the more immediate future, we ask that you broker an alignments, alliance excuse me, with Noman centaurs who roam the region. I trust you and your fellows are up to the task. He goes up, and this is the most polite gentleman so far. He bows, takes his missive, and before he leaves, he goes up to shake Matherson's hand. I wish you well in your endeavors, and hopefully we'll be able to communicate more over time. He goes, of course. Once you're established, I would love for you to come and visit so we can set up trade relations. And best of luck, of course. And to you noble heroes from the night before, congratulations on your success. Thank you. With a flip of his cape, and yes, that is written in the book, he leaves. <laughs> of course it is. It's written in the book. And last but certainly not least, last night's heroes. First, and she is interrupted as a voice cries out, Hold it! As Tartuccio comes forward. Ah, oh, yes, yeah. Tartuccio. <laughs> My best friend. <laughs> Where are we going? You oh, need no. to arrest this man, he points at Diego. <laughs> oh, this I should be, be good. I, I'm, I'm a deputy of the law. I could be arrested. <laughs> Diego's a deputy of the law. <clears throat> that's, that's literally not how it works. And second of all, I have it <laughs> under good authority that you raided from Lady Aldori's personal stores. And there's a gasp. Well, <laughs> as a duly deputized authority of the law, I say I did not. Just, nope, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Matheson is just like rubbing his face a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, Queen Aldori, as Tartuccio stands forward. Uh, during the confusion last night, it seems that the Ashen Corp. Is that what we're going with? Ashen Corp. The Ashen Corp. It seems that the Ashen Company, they're not worthy of the name Corporation, <laughs> have gone and stolen the salaries of all of your soldiers. And this causes a great big rabble among the crowd, and they're like... <laughs> 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 they 
they stole money from us? And all the other guards are actually kind of pissed off about this. <laughs> Diego's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't much like celery, but I did take a lot of money from the stores that were being uh, gone after by vile villains, including two giants. Here you go. I take out the money and give it, uh, set it on the table in front of her. That's all I have it with me. Okay. Let me roll Tartuccio's persuasion. It's going to be like a 30 or something. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Diego does not speak for the rest of us. <laughs> oh, he's got no, deception. I can see what I can do to handle. I, I was one off. I was one oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> so you you drop the money at the table and Jamandi speaks up she goes Sir Diego we had several hours in between your admittedly brave rescue and then why didn't you present the money before this moment because it was not time yet and when <laughs> she like she's absolutely stunned by that. <laughs> and when would Could you see he's lying, he rolled deception. <laughs> <laughs> and when would it have been appropriate to deliver that in your opinion? Well, now obviously. Uh-huh. Thank you for returning this. She carefully <laughs> scoops up all the salaries from the table and she passes it off to Iosif over here. And she goes... Looking good, Iosef. <laughs> <laughs> she also points out there was more in that storeroom than just the guard's salary. Would you happen oh, to... I don't think we took anything else. Or did we? I, I think you took some potions. Like, maybe. We we did take healing potions that we used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, in, in this box. or I give him a gnome box that or bag, wherever it was. Oh, that's right. The that bag. I found. Yeah. How much was uh, it? Like eight hundred gold. No, no, no. The gnome bag was a Tanglefoot bag. That wasn't from the chest. We found that in one of the rooms. That was one of the random adventurers, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Queen Aldori, as we had been fighting from one side of the formidable fortress here to the other, we needed a constant state of. Uh, rest and the healing potions allowed us to get to you as quickly as we could. Go ahead and roll diplomacy on that one. I'll even In fact, okay. we even were able to help out Tortuccio in his time of need. Can, can, I, can I also add that uh, Diego might have forgotten about the coins in his pocket when he died trying to defend your people. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Queen Aldori. He's an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> roll all right, so Diego, I'm gonna, Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. I'm gonna have Diego roll assist, so a diplomacy check for that, and then whatever that is. Okay, cool. Oh damn. No, no, that's good. That's fine. That's fine. I rolled a no. one. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Diego, why? Why do you all think this? Lady Aldori. <laughs> Realizing, you know, you that, go home. <laughs> realizing that we have uh, navigated into a very uncomfortable situation, <laughs> Lady Aldori mentions, I believe you, Matherson. I do believe, in fact, Diego was hired for a different set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> and he puts them on display daily. <laughs> I do recall... Yes, I do! <laughs> <laughs> Diego does this every day, yes. <laughs> My sugar. Queen Naldori, while you may not have needed our particular protection, as you plainly showed us, your gods and others did seem to need our assistance at times. Mm. And you know what? Lindsay will stand up because that's right, that's right. I was with them the whole like almost the entire time. <laughs> Matherson bravely defended me and several others, and she points to Valerie, Amiri, and Hiparam, to which they all nod in various uh, degrees of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Diego slayed a giant guarding the door that was protecting oh. the bad guys from us. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> wait, and he'll come back, and he'll go, I must return this back to you, and he will return the shield. Oh, to Harem? Yes. Yep. Oh, of course. Thank you. As he, as you can see, Queen Aldori, with how the things were, 
things slip our minds and when we are needing to return. And then he'll just take a seat back. Well, well they, they did more things. Thanks to their interference, they killed an innocent woman. The elf lady Jethal is dead by their hands. There's no way you could prove that. <laughs> he can with a deception. <laughs> I could see. He rolled a 30. <laughs> he did not roll 30. <laughs> <laughs> and Matheson well, flat out alongside goes, Yes. It was a hostage situation that had gone terribly. Even my own attacks seemed to have hit her, for I was not a steady enough hand. No, no, let, let I am speak. sorry for that. Uh, go ahead, Diego. Sorry. <laughs> I guess he just paints the story that we rushed in. She was being captured by the bandits, the Black Tear bandits that had invaded the entire room. And then we proceeded to attack the bandits. Unfortunately, everyone else's blows landed on her instead of the bandits. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the, b <laughs> the bandit in his cowardice used her as a shield to defend himself from our bravery. Ah, but the only reason that your attacks landed is because he had already taken her hostage and you didn't uh, uh, he... how do you know about this you're laying pre pretending to be dead in the back room like a, like a coward i was not to be i was not pretending i was also bravely covering your rear i was also bravely dead <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. in my head i'm just going wait he wasn't pretending to be a coward <laughs> was a coward? <laughs> so I'm not saying that. Ah, so, says that. Ah, so you were not pretending to be a coward. You actually are a coward. He goes, no, no. I was gathering the guards and protecting the rear and making sure that no bandit would escape. Several guards can attest to this as he points. Dago, to said, I, Dago thinks you were more showing your rear than protecting anything. No, no. We did point him back down the hallway and tell him to retreat. Because as we found him, he was knocked out laying on a carpet. Oh, a rug. Well, who right they, next who to they... the room where the hostage situation was taken. Which what makes me wonder, Tartushio, the only way you would know any of this would either be one of our group told you of what had occurred, or one of the escaping bandits would have told you. Ooh. Now, uh, do, now do, do also, does it come in that the fact that I identified the thing that Tartushio gave Matheson as belonging to the bad guy nation. I forgot what it was called. Yitax. Oh, I actually have that. Yeah, I have that written down. Because I identified that. The oh. gift, the ring, or whatever that Tertusio gave you. And then you probably know the significance. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tertusio? I wouldn't want to impede your honor as a... Uh, let's see. What was this? A Pataxian member? That you were in league with bandits, of course. You wouldn't be as such, correct? Roll diplomacy or whatever your best skill in that would be, because that's really good. I'll even give you. A, I'll even give you a plus four. And Diego will assist. Ooh, well, there's a nat twenty. Ooh, natural plus twenty. Four for yeah. Thirty one. <laughs> Diego, go ahead and roll your assist. <laughs> okay. It's like a twelve. Good enough. <laughs> At least, at least it wasn't a natural one. Yeah. You, you at least it's not a penalty. Thinking of producers during the court scene where, you know, they're si the old ladies are singing and he's just like, don't help me. <laughs> oh, yeah. just making it worse. Don't help me. Everyone like, rabble, 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 rabble. As, like, <laughs> as the drama of the room increases and... Tartuccio backs up that natural 20 intimidating him. And he goes, I travel all over the world. I could not possibly know where every single bobble I pick up comes from. I just simply grabbed it from a shop and thought it was a polite gift to you. I can see that your, mm, your dishonor, like, your, your dishonor sucks, okay? <laughs> Tartuccio, I was not making a comment on the Pataxian origin of this. I was making a comment on the bandits, but you seem focused on that aspect. Do I know that his, that his nation is known for deception in any way? Because I I roll a really high society check yeah, when I... Everyone kind of knows this. Like, Patax is, like, mm -hmm. absolutely kind of a shithole. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, Diego probably mentions that. If you are truly Pataxian, then surely you are sharing their belief of lies and deception. I find that... Quite xenophobic, sir. 
Not everyone from Patax is a deceitful liar. In fact, we have our own brand of honor. Adjust his so then you admit you're from Patax. Draws the sword and, he draws the sword and goes, what did you call me? What? It's like you said, he doesn't know what that means. He just assumes it's a very fancy insult. Ah, no. It means you hate foreigners, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Including Jesus. <laughs> so Rebetta will speak up. So you admit you're from Patax then. Checkmate. <laughs> Do you even know what that is? <laughs> I assume I tried, it is a check. I tried to explain it to him, but I think he only gets the rough it means I win part. He, he thinks the pieces are pretty. <laughs> King me. <laughs> <laughs> I will not stand here and have my honor insulted. You can ask any of the guards here. I was here all night, and I was here protecting Queen Aldori. Not my and, I would and I would turn the guards' money. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about what you were doing last night. I was worried about what you were doing during the fight. You see, we actually met with Queen Aldoy. She did not actually need any form of assistance at all, uh, which shames me, I will say. It seemed you were more worried about our fight than your own, Queen Aldoy. At this moment, she is absolutely silent, and she's just observing carefully as... She's debating when to jump in, and she will just slowly stand up and carefully, not take it out of the scabbard, but she will put her sword on the table and say, I believe this is enough. I do not believe that Tartuccio here is under any sort of foul play. And Tartuccio, I do believe that this is not the appropriate time to bring this up. As for you, Ashen Corp, I thank you very much for your actions. You were quite brave, and you did, as far as I could tell and as far as anyone has told me, sold, saved many lives. And you have earned the trust of Sir Foxtrot and Dot Com over there. Well, they were the ones who introduced us, uh, introduced us to you. So it is good to hear. Tartuccio, she hands him his missive, says, you are to go south and to prepare your own swath of land. I have also provided, as you requested, the funds for your mercenaries. Tartuccio grabs his missive and says, I will be king before any of them and I will reclaim the stolen lands and the name of the Aldori. Thank you. And he no, you no, you won't. Shush. Diego, calm down. <laughs> Good luck, Tartuccio, and I hope you can maintain your honor. I need I'm no a coward. <laughs> I need no wishes of luck from the likes of you. I am off now. This is what I'm doing when I. What the likes of Diego? Would you like your brooch back? No, thank you. I do not need it. <laughs> Bye. And I will cherish it. <laughs> <laughs> And Mathis, and we'll go back to sitting down. Hell yeah. <laughs> that was good. Lady Aldori rubs her temples and go, and for last night's heroes, before I was interrupted. <laughs> I want to thank you. And, retur and returner of money. <laughs> yes, you returned my money. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that you did not steal my money. Although, I must reiterate, this is money for my soldiers. <laughs> Wish we returned, yes. Your courage and gumption, I'm sure, will take you quite far. For your charge. That's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, scratches the table. For your charter. <laughs> As I was saying. <laughs> We ask that you travel to the southwest, to the region known as the Green Belt, a swath of wildlands that includes the forests of the Narl Marches and the hill countries of the Kame Lands. We ask that you handle a bandit problem, particularly a bandit who has come to call himself the Stag Lord. You will be stationed... Well, this missive will grant you station at Oleg's trading post. There, Oleg will be serving as our liaison between each other. He goes that liaison. He works very hard. No, he... Matheson, please take your missive. <laughs> of course. 
Oh, okay. Just writing down some notes. Yeah. Trying to make sure all of this is... One moment. Uh, works out. Alex entered the room. What's up, sweetie? I'm an Yeah. Yeah, you like Oleg, remember? Love Oleg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? Oh, I'm in Go, go lay down. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we did Kingmaker before, and Alex really liked Oleg. So. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is, this is Lady Aldori is like, who the hell keeps interrupting me? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine the, the gamers' hands of fate, where like they're playing, the villain is trying to do like a speech, but real life keeps interrupting him, and he gets annoyed. <laughs> Here's Thank your you, charger. Lady I look forward to seeing what kind of government you can form. A capitalist one. <laughs> Either way, we'll try our best. Democracy! I'll bow and return again. <laughs> he said to just keep getting up and down and up and down. <laughs> While this is and your steps in, Matherson. Yep. <laughs> A few other adventuring parties are handed their various missives. Essentially, they're sent to, like, other various places. None of them seem very interesting, but... You are then given breakfast, and you are basically allowed to stay for up to three days in order to fully recover yourselves if you need to. Here's the problem, though. Because of that nat one from earlier and various other things, any attempt to wiggle more supplies out of Lady Aldori has pretty much failed. Luckily, <laughs> though, you have not burned any bridges. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm hoping that Nat 20 tried to help in, in making sure that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you absolutely nailed that. So now we're at the time where you can recruit up to these four companions. Also, Edwin and .com are over here in the corner, so you can RP that out as you like. Otherwise, we can skip right to Oleg's if you want. I mean, Matheson would probably be going to each, making offers, things like that, finding out what he could get, et cetera, et cetera. I, like, I don't know if we need to RP it or not, but... okay. You, know, you see how he mo he moves and grooves. He does. He yeah. moves and grooves very well. At the moment, I think the easiest convincing will be Rasheen and Valerie. Yes, I, I wonder why that could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys have history, and essentially, if you go up to her, just a st straight diplomacy check. I'll we'll determine that. Interesting. Well, Valerie, considering all the recent events and. Now that everyone's starting to go towards the different kingdoms to begin, would you consider joining us? She pauses and she's like, join a mercenary company? That's... <sighs> Normally, I would say no. I do not think my honor could take such a blow. However, if you and your Sir Matheson are as noble as I believe you are, I believe I can overlook the other she eyes Diego and Marquis. <laughs> My other apprehensions. I am happy to join you, Rasheen, on your journey. What did we do? <laughs> I know, I find it funny because thinking about it in terms of our actual backgrounds, Matheson's probably the most accomplished criminal of them all. <laughs> The thing is, like, yeah, he, he's done so well at hiding the facts that, like, yeah. everyone thinks, none yeah, of us know. Yeah, no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. And I'm a deputized officer of the law. So. Dude, it's, it's gonna be amazing. Whatever, just like his like form of criminal stuff just comes up on being like, you know, man, Madison, you're really good at logistic. You know, like like making sure stuff gets from point A to point B. Like, yeah, you know. I'm, you're really just. I did time, some shipping and things earlier in life. <laughs> really, really good at biting my law. <laughs> she says, I pledge to you my sword and my shield for your journey, uh, good sirs. As she stands up and then like does like a kneel behind the table, it's it's kind of <laughs> awkward, like really. <laughs> and I just assume that uh, Amiri joins us, like a Sundere. It's like I'm gonna go with you guys, not because I like your anything. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, say, I don't think Lindsay needs much convincing either. What? You, you what? No, what? No, I don't. What? No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't already. Well, okay. <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> she, <Yeah. laughs> she's like th throws. I her. won't impose. Obviously, she, she, she's just like no impose, impose. <laughs> what? I 
I'm already. <laughs> What's that? I, I I don't already have. Uh, she like does the kill gesture to servants that are bringing her equipment already. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> already packed and ready to go. I see. Uh, yes, I, I see you want to follow a great hero like Diego. I understand. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I get it. She wants to start her kingmaker story with us before traveling to the other kings to see how they're doing. It makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. Clearly, she knows we'll make it first. Mm -hmm. You just see Madison just going like, mm-hmm, and just winks at her. And, just, you know, and then walks down towards Harim. She, like, blushes and hides the chapter in her book called, like, Kingmaker, the, the, the Matheson story. <laughs> it's like a well-drawn picture of Matheson shirtless. <laughs> she has no idea what that looks like, but she just, like, em embellished. <laughs> mm -hmm, just closing the book. <laughs> right, uh, Marquis. Yes, yeah, so I, I would like to go over to Dot .com and Edwin and to uh, see how, how they've been doing what with the raid and what they got up to. But I will walk up and just look at dot .com and go, and the mystery is solved. Dot .com, is it? Yeah, they, she kind of dropped, she just kind of name dropped me there. I didn't really, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> she doxed it. <laughs> Would you prefer <laughs> doxed? God damn it, Queenie. <laughs> Like would you prefer? <laughs> would you prefer I can I continue calling you pet then? To be honest, a little bit. <laughs> no, it's not like a weird like thing. It's just like my name means stuff to people who know. You know. So bet it nods <laughs> that I can understand. It's not a. Weird it's a case thing. of better. Here's a thing. I'm a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah. Here's a thing. <laughs> I, I will admit, though, I do owe you my life. You and your weird group, you know, helped me out a lot. So here's what I'll do for you. He uh, <laughs> he places something on the table, and you're going to need to make a really high society check to determine what the f*** this is. And go. No, 16. He goes, keep that on you. And he points to a little button on it. He says, if you're ever in trouble, hit that button. Don't expect a quick response, though. <laughs> so better, we'll, we'll pocket it. I'm on dial-up. <laughs> dial yeah, this, uh, this, this king of the internet sucks. He says, basically, what that'll do is that'll tell me where you're at. I'll um, gather some stuff and send it on your way. I'll send you good vibes. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not needed, however... Thank you. Yeah, I got some shit to How do did... here. Oh, sorry, 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 go ahead. How did you two fare during the raid? Uh, we were actually in the, uh, and then Edwin just kind of nudges him. Uh, oh, we were in our rooms. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like one hell of a room. Huh. Sleeping, sleeping even. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping. De definitely not working. Definitely not working on it. Edward <laughs> kicks him. <laughs> Ow! God damn it, Edward! <laughs> I'm just telling him that. We <laughs> Edward, why won't you let me tell him about their secret plans? <laughs> why won't you let me tell him about the? <laughs> Edward's like, hey, yeah, <laughs> stop by, Marquis Sorbet. <laughs> <laughs> Should you have need of our services again, I'll look to Edwin. By all means, contact us. Edwin nods and he says, as we get closer to establishing a solid kingdom, we will be in contact. Provided that your company, he looks over to your like group, provided that your company is faring well. Well... <sighs> There are many unknown variables yet, but I don't see that being too difficult currently. Okay. Sorbetta will Edwin a nod, give dot co uh, sorry, give Pet a nod. <laughs> <laughs> May you two both have safe travels. Dot com gives a thumbs up. 
which is not like a thing anywhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that means okay. I'm just gonna assume it's a, it's a goblin thing. <laughs> it's a goblin. Thing. I re I respond with a meme. <laughs> I respond with a meme. Oh, that's some dang shit right there. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Matheson, you approach Harim, who is just quietly observing everyone. Harim, I will simply ask, would you do my company the honor of finding a good place to die near us? God damn it, you <laughs> know how to talk to him so well. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like an insult to anyone else? Like, it, find a good place to die near us, please. G give me one diplomacy roll. I'll give you a plus four. <laughs> I'll give you a plus four. <laughs> He says, you know, it is better than wasting away in the castle. And I considered joining Tartuccio, but he seemed like a... <laughs> 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 Hopefully he can regain his honor. Mm -hmm. I will join you, Matheson. And hopefully we find good, swift, and honorable deaths out in the wilds. May we do many great things before we end. <laughs> Clean glasses. <laughs> I'm here sitting there going, oh boy, I certainly hope no one asked me to join their adventuring party. I was going to take <laughs> on the whole stolen lands myself. <laughs> it would be an amazing legend. Take us like, good luck. <laughs> but if you'd like some assistance, of course. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> He goes over there. I see you are a very powerful warrior. You're a very good giant slayer. Almost. Almost. Almost as good as the eagle. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> very honorable and powerful warrior. Not everyone could have taken on such a, a magnificent foe. Magnificent, grand foe that no one else could, could take down except for you and Diego, of course. I would be honored to fight alongside someone as powerful and skilled with a sword as you. She looks and says, Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm since we're going in the same direction, <laughs> I'm not gonna join the party because you know I'm just such a good giant slayer and all. <laughs> but if we're heading in the same place, I could go to all eggs, I guess. It's not gonna like you though. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps on the road you could even show up, Diego, by killing a giant on the way. I'm afraid this is impossible, but you might get close. <laughs> Her legs are out onto the floor, and she's kind of leaning back. Her head just kind of rolls back at Rasheed when he says that. And she's like, yeah, you know what? Um, I've got a few hunting things that I need to do, you know, for my tribe and all. Uh, got a, you know, it's our rite of passage as, uh, you know, powerful six-claw barbarians. <laughs> I think. Doing powerful things. Doing powerful, strong, strong things. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 could, I suppose I could go with this group. <laughs> but I, I'm not, I'm not a member of the group, she insists. <laughs> Understandable. Of course. Okay, that way you'll be nearby when I kill something else with this knife. But I still want paid uh, because you're still. I, I was going to say, Matheson in his head is just going, "Fantastic, we don't have to pay her." And then she says that anyway. <laughs> sort that. No sort that. It was literally putting a note. Do not need to worry about logistics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I still want. Because I was just for... picturing that going like, "Oh well, then you'll have to be, of course, part of the company. You would have to be representing." Yes? She goes, no, I heard in my travels, there's people called constrictors that get money for every kill they do. It's like a mercenary thing. Like a snake? Yeah, like a snake! <laughs> she <laughs> completely misunderstanding what contractor means. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> the, the so you're asking... To be hired per kill, yes? Yeah, that's it. You're gonna paint. Pa you sure? Because Diego might steal your kills. If my blade touches the monster, or the baddie, or the person, or the. She loses <laughs> track of her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I can see like a. Like a it only counts as one coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I get play, paid per blood drawn. I understand how eager you are, and we'll discuss it. How does that sound? Make sure you're getting a good deal. I don't like discussing. Just pay me whenever I kill something. Or, or bleed something. <laughs> she clarifies. 
<laughs> Marquis just gonna message to Matherson. She's leaving it her pay up to us. We can just pay her per copper each blood spilled. I'm just thinking. Uh, wait, because I believe I can reply with that. I'm just going. Yes, yes you but can. She will also be laying with us with a big ass sword. <sighs> Look, we just make them. We just make them really <laughs> shiny copper pieces. She won't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play it by ear. <laughs> mm, fair enough. Completely planning to rip off a Miri, and that's so funny. It's great. <laughs> How little can we pay here, actually? Oh God, do we have to work out wages for everybody? Like <laughs> well, just the Miri, I think, because we. Oh yeah, she's only she... working on wages. True. <laughs> pay minimum wage. <laughs> no, pay... You're on a tip system. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, the Ashen Company heads out. You rest just en enough in order to regain all of your hit points. Now, I see different things than you do. You guys see these squares, right? I don't see any squares. The I hexes? see hexes. Oh, hexes, see hexes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys see these hexes, correct? Yes. Yes. So the way Kingmaker works is travel time is determined by the slowest person. As far as I can tell, no one travels below 15 feet per round, which means you can do what is called one activity per day. So the way this works is traveling from one hex to another is one activity. Okay. You could spend one activity <clears throat> to fully explore an area, those are group things. And then the rest are essentially like various individual things. But since you're traveling as a group, we're going to just consider each hex traveled as one day. Interesting. Okay, so I assume I Matheson is... All right, go go get him, Matheson. What, what do we do? Also, by the way, while we're traveling, Diego is obviously having Amiri sign out the, pro the proper 1099 paperwork because I do have a lot of legal lore. That's right. I'm really good at it. You do. All right, you can work out. Why don't you? Okay, you know what? Amiri is closest to you. She trusts you to work out her contract, especially because she can't read. <laughs> like she canonically cannot read. Why don't Why don't you go ahead and determine like what her contract is? Diego's gonna be as fair as possible, so mm -hmm. like he's not trying to rip her off. Mm -hmm. Although, I, I, wait, who's going to be in charge of paying her? I assume it's Matherson. We can, we, we'll, hand, we'll hand wave it later. Technically, it's Marquis, because yep. he's handling the actual logistics and tech. I guess Diego's going to give her this awesome deal, and then, like, oh, did you, did you work it out, Diego? Yep. And then Mary's like, oh, yeah, I get, like, 30 gold per kill. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> no, that, that would be something like... denied. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just like, you know, it has to be contractually signed by, you know, first off, by Matheson, you know, as lead of the, you know, the the Ashen Corps, and then, but he would be looking at this going, ah, oh, thank you, Diego. Marquis, <laughs> yes, <we're> <laughs> hands it to Marquis. <laughs> Let's totally uphold this. <laughs> All right, uh, Please review it. You know, uh, I, I, I gave myself three rules that Diego follows that I, to keep myself in check. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them that he he'll never betray your friend and he'll never break a promise. Okay. Go ahead and roll legal lore to work out Amiri's contract. Because again, you are officially missived mm -hmm. under Bevoy or Brevoy. So like this is I rolled eleven. Ooh. <laughs> it's it's not bad. It's like an okay contract. It's okay. It's it's very loose and quick, which is what Amiri likes. But <laughs> in the future, if someone were to like there there are there are holes in it, essentially. It's kind of vague. Yeah. I guess it's one he got off. Like this is like something that is not custom. It's like a, a, a one that's like mass produced or something. Yeah. <laughs> See, I love this because this, the whole thing is: is the worse his role is, the more Matherson can yes. use it if need be. Exactly. <laughs> I love this. Thank you, Diego. <laughs> you are most welcome. <laughs> I guess it ends everyone like the this, this signs it or whatever. It's like just, like I guess she can't write, so it's like do you mark? I guess I guess an X or something like that. Yeah, it's an X usually. Yeah, uh, she's a member of the six paws or the six bears or something. She'll she'll make like a paw print. And I assume like Diego would spend a long time talking to her about it, so she he would listen to what she what her concerns were, <laughs> and then he would make sure those were addressed in and fill them out in the pre blank spaces of the contract because it's mass produced. Okay, every. 
two kills. <laughs> or something like that. Goes, no, 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 no. She's like very specific. She's like, whenever I draw blood, <laughs> that's that's when I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see what I can do. I'm just now picturing we just find a bunch of constructs, and he's just like, all right, how much do I get? You go, nothing. Well, based on your contract, blood. nothing. Because <laughs> yes. specifically, you kept arguing this point with us when we were trying to tell you, not a good idea, but... She's... It's, also, it's like a bunch of scratches out and everything. <laughs> she's going to absolutely insist on drop blood because she wouldn't even consider that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Good. Okay. Wait, you can see how this? both Marquis and I are just like, Boy. <laughs> <laughs> contractor agrees to fight on behalf of party. Party agrees to compensate contractor per, and then it's blank, and he goes, blood drawn. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. She's like, awesome. And she, she takes it and she's like proudly showing off her contract to the other like employees. Meanwhile, they have like amazing like compensation in theirs. Like, like they've got dental. <laughs> Healthcare. It's just like leaning money. down to Lindsay, just going, we tried. <laughs> I guess we actually do need to know her wage. Like what is her wage per blood drawn? Reasonably a silver piece per blood drawn is actually pretty okay. That's like a living wage for a mercenary. If I, okay. If Sounds I recall, good. I would say everything's signed and take care of. Then you go puts on some little glasses and looks over the fine print, like everything's squared away. <laughs> like everything's squared away. I, it's like it starts speaking like Latin and everything to make sure, like he reads it over and everything. All the blanks are filled out. Okay, I need your date and uh, and, and and print here and sign here and sign here. And <laughs> e pluribus unum. And then he <laughs> rolls it up. <laughs> All right, roll the legal lore for the other employee's contract. Like, just, so like, Wait, that does was, Diego, did Diego negotiate all the all the contracts? I, I think that would be part negotiate, of it. probably not, but or maybe. <laughs> it's like writing you writing out the contract to meet what we probably discussed. Okay, we'll see. Yes, yeah. <laughs> roll your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he definitely didn't negotiate the go. Okay, so they, they get they get worse contracts than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is gonna be like just, a like Marquis just reading over these and just like Really? This is this is what they're signing? <laughs> right. He was very good. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> they all get these weak ass contracts. <laughs> so they're only half covered by insurance. They're lower halves. <laughs> oh god. Right. Do they know that their health insurance kicks in, in six months. So yeah, after the, it's, in the, it's in the fine print. It, it, okay, so yeah, everyone signs very weak contracts, but like that's good for you. But also, I will remember this later <laughs> because that could be fun to exploit in the later chapters. <laughs> like all the yoga did was give them pre-printed contracts that he he talked to them with and said, "Okay, this is what you want. All right, here you go. <laughs> all right, roll Matherson's diplomacy for the assist." Because <laughs> Matherson absolutely would be the negotiator, and then Diego would be the writer. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I guess that would make sense. Matherson would be the negotiator, and Diego would write the contract because he's a legal master. Yeah. That, that's what I love. I love the idea that we're just discussing this, and, and Diego's going, yeah, 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 mm, yeah. And he's just <laughs> writing out this thing, and we're just sitting there going, God damn it. <laughs> then I assume the legal lore meant how strong the contracts were, so it could go either way. Mm hmm. <laughs> They can negotiate for better because it's vague in some places, and then we can negotiate for, well, for better for us because it's vague in some places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think at some point, Lindsay's like on the road and she's talking to Matherson, and she's like, you know, I think once you become king, I'm going to renegotiate. <laughs> like, <laughs> according to this, I have to write Diego three epics by the time we're done. <laughs> And it doesn't even you know, give me uh, a deadline. It just says by the time we're done, and like that's not defined anywhere. You know, uh, as, as uh, the other signer of that contract, I'm totally okay with you not using any of these. 
<laughs> She's like, yeah, th- this this is weak. He, he's trying his best. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah. watch, watch when we get to an actual court scene. Diego just f-ing rocks it. And yep, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. I have an objection. Objection. Diego absolutely takes them to f- town. I love it because like he goes objection, and everybody's just like, oh god, Diego, shut up! And then he just starts nailing it off. We're just like. Okay, oh, what? What, what, <laughs> what just happened here? The, the, referencing the, uh, the the court case of Jadari versus Southern. <laughs> the outcome was this. How the f*** did we win Brevoy? <laughs> <laughs> you spend three days recovering fully and working out your contract with your brand new employees. You guys... Um, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What I was going to ask is, so, so way back when, when you were describing how this map worked... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were the general actions we can do? So at the moment, the only actions that matter because you're traveling from Brevoy to Oleg's trading post is essentially travel from one spot to another. Like there are two group activities. There's travel and there's recon an area. And because of your party's speed, you can do one activity per day. At the moment you are in Brevoy, you do not actually enter the hinterlands until right here. So at the moment, this is just going to take one day. One day. You have two more days until you hit the, hit, reach the Hinterlands, but Oleg's trading post is over here. The reason I'm stopping is because in this particular area, there is a landmark that I need to read off real quick. In addition, I'm just wondering what giant dinosaur made that lake. Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not, it's definitely, it. definitely not a Tarrasque. It's fine. It's definitely not sleeping underneath the ground as we speak. It's fine. I uh, no. It, uh, <laughs> sorry, the size of that lake. Even a terrasque wouldn't make that. <laughs> <laughs> that depends on who's running the terrasque. All right. That would be a living like mountain range. Yes. <laughs> you reach an area called Nivakta's Crossing, and you could do a society check to learn about it if you want. Otherwise, it is simply a small trading village. Oh, goddamn. Hell yeah. I think Marquis knows everything about this thing. <laughs> Navakas Crossing is the southernmost village in the Rossland and an alert assembly of traders, hunters, fishers, and trappers. The village itself is surrounded by a wooden palisade and is set on the northeastern bank of the Shrike River. A low bridge across the river onto the other wilderness to the south, which is where the one guy who shook hands with Matherson is heading. It is well defended by guard towers and various guards. The people of the crossing are sturdy, down to earth, and possess stunted senses of humor, serious to a fault, and are slightly more suspicious of visitors from what they would call the south than they are from the north, but are willing to take the PC's coin for trade nonetheless. Here are the stats for the particular town. There's 140 people, mostly humans. They mostly speak common or halit. They worship Phrasma, interestingly enough and otherwise their only threats are bandits. If there's nothing you'd like to shop for, you can spend the night here in relative comfort and peace. And if you want, you can spend a (coughs) silver piece on... You could buy a recipe here, I just realized. Ooh, is this more of your personal ones? We can do the personal ones or the Kingmaker specific ones. Oh, I didn't realize the Kingmaker also had their own. Yeah, Kingmaker has their own. So there are three dishes you can buy in terms of Kingmaker. You could buy the fish on a stick recipe for one gold piece. Fish on a stick basically lets you march longer without needing to rest. So if you critically succeed fish on a stick, you can actually do two activities that day. Okay, that sounds like a fantastic idea to buy. Can we buy multiple recipes or only one? At the let's let's roll real quick. I'm just I'm i again. This is this is new to me too. I've not incorporated recipes before. No worries. Uh, just real quick, Rasheen, have you gotten a healer's kit yet? <laughs> no, that's actually on my list of things to buy. While we were going through this town. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna suggest that. Yes, I can understand the reason why you possibly are suggesting that. Alright, Marquis' society check basically told you everything about the town. 
So I'm going to have you just roll a quick d20 to see if there's more recipes in this town. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Regrettably, there are no other meals in this town that you can buy. But, Marquis, you, yes. you hear rumor that there's an ice cream shop in town. Okay. Um, so there is a recipe called chocolate ice cream. It is a level four recipe. And essentially, you will need to convince the shop owner to sell you the recipe. Mm. And because Matherson got a nat one, this is your scene at the moment. Yep. yep. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, yes. The man with zero charisma. My time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys travel through this town. And again, they're a little suspicious of you because you got a ragtag weird bunch, especially because all of your officers are very rare races. Hmm. So they are a little suspicious. But when you enter the ice cream shop, there's a normal human man. <laughs> but... Hello, uh, human. <laughs> <laughs> he's surprised. He's like, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> A frost demon this far south. Hello. My name is Sorbetta. Marquis Sorbetta. What is your name? I assume you're the proprietor of the shop? Yes, my name is Random Entrances. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ice Cream Man. <laughs> I say Crayon. <laughs> you know what his name is Najim he's got a turban on and he's wearing sand elf garb I'm not going to do the accent but he is nope. he is excited to see you <laughs> <laughs> Najim says yes um, welcome to my establishment would you like I like perhaps this is rude to say but I have a feeling you've had ice cream before <laughs> that I have I was surprised to see a shop with it this far south. He goes, oh, for certain. Because this is so rare, he takes a tiny wooden spoon and hands you a sample of chocolate ice cream. I will take a sample. Do I die? <laughs> you do not die, but I'm going to roll his particular lore yep. check. It is quite well made. It is very Ooh, tasty. Okay. You suspect that if you order something, you will get the bonus for basically consuming it. <laughs> My compliments to the chef. He goes, why, that's me. He's delicious. I, I have been dabbling in frost magic for years, and when I went north, I managed to encounter another frost demon who crafted ice cream such as this, and I've been fascinated ever since. Well, I dare say, while there's always room for improvement, even amongst the masters, you have clearly honed your craft. He gives a little, like, hand wave, like, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I would love if, uh, nothing more, if you could try some more flavors. Un uh, unfortunately, though, I cannot afford to give out too many samples, um, but perhaps uh, I could tempt you with a discount. Oh. And what would that cost? Mmm, tempt away. Remember, ice cream is incredibly rare in this kind mm -hmm. of times. So normally he charges a gold piece. He's going to offer you for five silver. Sure. I'll take that. He prepares a serving and hands it to you. And as you consume it, you gain the benefit. You gain a plus one bonus to performance checks for the next 24 hours. I was hoping it was going to be diplomacy. <laughs> I will let you, like, if you can figure out a way... I will let you use performance to convince him to give you the recipe. If you... I am not even proficient in performance, so... Or, or did, uh, did I say... Uh, I, I said proficiency, yeah, or, or, or diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, whew, after eating the ice cream, obviously this is rare down here. I can't imagine you've had many people who can afford it. Have you been able to advertise outside of Nevakta's Crossing? No, many people are too untrusting of, um, well, foreigners. He he sighs, admittedly. Uh, Brevoy is not a very open-minded culture, and bringing ice cream, which has been created by the, he carefully chooses words, r less reputable 
members of the Frost Demon clans. I regret to say that uh, not not a ton of business, no. Perhaps we could negotiate a deal then. He raises an eyebrow, yes. My party of companions and I currently are chartered to begin exploring and taming some of this land. If you would give me the recipe, I could give out samples as, as we go and, and send business more your way. His eyebrows raise. Oh, that's quite good. Hmm. Go ahead and do diplomacy. But ah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Six. Yeah. Even if you're giving me the plus one bonus. <laughs> he goes, ah. Sir, I'm afraid I can't quite give it. This was a recipe given to me by a master, but perhaps a deal. Two. Go on. In the. Uh, I'm sure there's a cold region here, but I don't know it offhand. Mm -hmm. In the mm, cold region, <laughs> yep. says there are a clan of Winter Wolf Okami. I have been dying to get their recipe for Frosted Wolf Donuts. If you can get me that and a bushel of their sugar cane, I will happily strike that deal with you, my friend. Where on the map is it supposed to be? Like, how, how far afield from where we're supposed to set up is it? Um. Oh, it's it's far away. It's all the way yeah. over here. Okay. Yeah, in the yeah. Branthland Mountains. Yeah. Should my party have reason to go that far to the west, I would happily bring the information back to you. However, our current plans do not have us going anywhere near there for quite some time. He sighs and says, oh, I figured. Ah, oh, well. I can let you attempt a society check. Yep. Significantly higher DC, but yeah. 22. Okay. I'll let you repitch, and if your pitch is good, it's yours. We are currently heading towards Oleg's Trading Post, a hub for both ourselves and others that have been sent out here for supplies. I can offer to send your, not your recipe, I would not share that, I promise, but I can offer to send samples with the other groups who have their own missives setting up locations. You would have not one burgeoning kingdom, but several who know your name and the name of your establishment. His eyes widen at that. He's like, oh, then perhaps maybe I can finally get out of this hole in the wall and my wife will come back. Yes, ex I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, wife? <laughs> I'm not a failure, Margaret. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> says, of course, I'll happily do that. Let me go and get a contract. <laughs> <laughs> he says, let me go and get my own uh, set of... St Essentially, you're just making business deals. And then he'll, yeah. he'll sell you the recipe. Excellent. Okay. All right. So you spend some time and you basically promise to ship his ice cream to Oleg's mm -hmm. like on consignment and he'll get a kickback and with yep. that you now have a steady supply of special ingredients that you would need for this particular ice cream and you can buy his recipe and he's asking for five gold for it well I've, I've come this far and I have the gold at the moment so uh, we'll take it for now Unless anyone else has an, has an objection. <laughs> I don't know how much gold the rest of you have. <laughs> Five gold is pricey. Like, it's just, yeah. it just is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I'm fine with that for the time being. Cool, cool, cool. And if he still would like the Winter Wolf, Frosted Wolf Donuts and Sugar Cane, that is still on on the table should we go in that direction. Of course, but at the moment I'm I'm looking to master my ice cream. 
but yes. Of course. Okay. Five gold recipe. There's no bourbon in anything. Nope. <laughs> It, basically, yeah, it's ice cream. the the way it, yeah, it, it's just chocolate ice cream. Like that, it's just nope. that's just what it is. <laughs> you do need a way to do frost damage in order to prepare it, but otherwise, yeah, no, it's it's actually a really strong recipe. Excellent. All right, you guys rest up, travel again, two more days. This is RL four. Did I buy a healer's tools while I was there? Yes, you absolutely do. Okay, I just, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really get a chance to do that in we'll play for, for that, so I just wanted to double check. I'm sorry. It, no, yeah. no, the group gets ice cream and nothing else. <laughs> uh, you, you heard him. We didn't, we didn't get it. Okay. So I better <laughs> has, has spoken. Uh, can, can, uh, can Diego talk with the local sheriff? Yes. To get in, in information of the local uh, uh, surrounding lands, because I mean, we're after bandits. That's we're sent after bandits. I'm, I'm talking to the local sheriff might help with uh, you know the crime in the area. Okay, yeah, yeah. They go probably you know you know swap stories with him at first mm -hmm. and go build some rapport and then ask him if he know what it, it's, I think Stag Lord, right? The Stag Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, if he knows about the Stag Lord and any any interesting information he might know about. All right, let's see if this guy knows anything. Let's give him a uh, six. He goes, oh! He goes, <laughs> yeah, I heard of that stag lord. I don't think he's much of a threat. He mostly hangs out in the hinterlands. And, you know, we're we're right next to Brevoy. We got our angel. I say... <laughs> wow. Any information on how many men he leads? Ooh, Okay. That's a great question. He says, well, if, if we've heard of him and if you got a missive for him, I suspect he's got anywhere between, I don't know, 30 to 50 men. Mm, interesting. Not too bad, not too bad. Any giants in his ranks? Shit, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his, his role is way too low to know that, but he's like, maybe. I doubt it. Them giant folk tend to stick to the mountains, don't they? Sometimes. And yes, this is why a lot of them are become ninjas after a while. You you see, ninja clans tend to build them build their villages and mountains. This is why. None of people know this. But uh, Diego does. Diego knows this. I feel like you made that up, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what a ninja would want you to think. <laughs> Well, um, if you do encounter the Stag Lord, Brevoy does have a reward for every single uh, bit of proof that you send in from one of them. They carry these lockets. He takes you into the back into, like, evidence, <laughs> and he shows you this special locket with a horned helmet, like antlers. Excuse me. There's antlers on these helmets, and they use that to identify each other. For every one of those you turn in, you get five gold pieces. I see. If... Hypothetically speaking, they had a tattoo on that bore the same symbol, and I cut it off. Can I bring it back for the same amount of money? He rubs his chin. He says, to my knowledge, the guy's <laughs> trying to make his own kingdom or something. Some stupid shit like that. <laughs> I don't know any idiot who tries to do that without a crystal. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, most ridiculous. <laughs> But, uh, who could believe that? <laughs> could? The, tall, the, the, the tall tales some people will spread. Yeah, good luck making a kingdom out in the stolen land without making a crystal to ward off them monster types. But, <laughs> yeah, um, he's been minting his own coinage and using that as, uh, as necklaces. So, no tattoos, nothing like that. They're trying to go legit. Or as legit Shame. As I'm really, Ooh, oops, sorry. I'm really good. Diego is really good at cutting off tattoos. But I should collect the necklaces. You do that, buddy. <laughs> well, I imagine taking necklaces is easier than taking tattoos, buddy. Yes, but not quite as fun. That's pretty f***ing sick, I... man. <laughs> yeah, I was just a more <laughs> what what is your alignment again? <laughs> <laughs> Chaotic good. <laughs> That's pretty f***ed up, man. <laughs> who, who deputized you? <laughs> 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 I did. So, so no, I think you got a tattoo. <laughs> what? 
It's like, sir, so and so. I think he had a tattoo. <laughs> what do you mean, I had a tattoo? Gotta go. <laughs> well, it's here. I keep it on me. No, yeah. <laughs> it was a gift. It shows I was deputized. <laughs> I, I assume he was deputized by a guy who hates tattoos. Like one of those guys, like just, I hate those, those tattoos. Only thugs have them. <laughs> and Diego took that to heart. Like, like, what? <laughs> Diego's, exactly. Diego Sensei has absolutely no tattoos. <laughs> like, he, absolutely. He, he doesn't have like a piercing. <laughs> the tattoos are always evil. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, do, do um, I guess else? we clink, uh -huh. clink glasses and uh, finish our beers or whatever we're having, and I leave. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dead man bought a thing. Okay, that's everybody. Cool. <laughs> Yes, it's the other thing. All right. <laughs> Two more days pass, and you encounter the Crooked Falls. Now, the Crooked Falls is actually pretty hard to navigate, and it would normally take you two days to go across, unless you can make an athletics check. I will allow the best person at, at, at athletics to perform it for the party. Uh, just like in the video. I have a plus six. Yep. That is a DC 20, oh. man. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, you know how it goes. <laughs> can I assist? You can, yes. Let's see. Come on, roll well. Just, just not want it again. <laughs> 16. Hey! I'll allow it. <laughs> so this only takes you a single day to get through. One. And the rest of the trip is without event. You eventually make it to Oleg's trading post. <laughs> Place where Elena was just like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All leg trading post. Da -da. Uh, well, we, we, we didn't have the thing where we, we camped each night and we swapped stories. Like one time, I was Diego had to go after a bandit and he had not no tattoo, but he he thought he had no tattoo. He found it after repeatedly after pulling down his pants. It was somewhere around that region. I think Diego. he didn't actually have a tattoo, so I gave him a tattoo and then cut it off. <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> Diego, you've said this story. Two nights in a row. You know, it's a different story. Believe me, you have no idea how many times I've encountered a bandit just, who just hit his because tattoo. you say he had a pimple on the other butt cheek this time <laughs> does not mean it's a new story. It's totally different. <laughs> He's well, an orc this time. Well, the thing is, I was going to do that the whole camping out and telling stories thing, like as we get into the sandbox yeah. aspect. Not necessarily this one. Okay. Okay. So, we just bullshitted something. Once we yeah. uh. We must get through this tutorial. Yeah, once we get through this tutorial. <laughs> tutorial, tutorial 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> tutorial 3. <laughs> Kingmaker, episode 3, tutorial 4. <laughs> <laughs> you guys eventually make it to Oleg's trading post, which is a, it's almost like a small fortress. It is surrounded by 10 foot high wooden palisades. There's a watchtower over here that you can see. And you can tell that this is the remnants of an old... Machine, no! Sorry, there was a catapult there. I was making a dumb joke. These, this is the remnants of an old bandit fort, essentially. Mmm. Yeah. As you guys enter, you can see that there are several buildings. Here. Here. What the fuck? Essentially, yeah, you, you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> actually, a good question. Do you guys actually see like what? Like we're uh, let me let me send you what we're seeing because <laughs> yeah. it's a uh, it's a bit interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting <laughs> is a word. <laughs> there you go. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really annoying. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do, because, like, I know why that's there. That's absolutely there for, you know, when the, when there's fighting. But for now... Mm -hmm. For eventual I, combat, yeah. Why don't I do, turn that off? Is that better? Oh, do you actually better. see a map now? Yes. Wow, oh, they've got four catapults. <laughs> Jesus, four <laughs> Gee, Oleg, four. 